you guys just watched a video in which electrons were fired one at a time through two slits, just like light was in the Young's double slit experiment. In Young's double slit experiment, when we fired photons or light at these two openings, the pattern that we saw on the screen was this one. Bright spot, dark spot, bright spot, dark spot, bright spot, dark spot. When we fire a wave, when we send a wave through two holes, we will see an interference pattern. If we were to send two baseballs through two holes, then we should expect to see something like this. A couple of dents in the screen. Two dents in the screen corresponding to where the baseballs hit. If we fire electrons through those two holes, we should expect, at least intuitively expect, to see the same patterns we saw with the baseballs, not the pattern that we saw with the light or with the EMR. The problem is, we don't. When we fire electrons through these holes one at a time, as long as we're not observing them, then these electrons will behave like the light does. They will interfere with themselves. The electrons must, therefore, behave like waves. If they're going to produce an interference pattern, which is a property of waves, then these electrons must be waves. Louis de Broglie came up with a hypothesis that was based purely on symmetry. He said that if light, okay, which was prior to 1905 considered to be a wave, if light as a wave can behave like a particle, in other words, if light's a photon, and if light can have particle properties, then electrons that are particles should be able to have wave properties. He derived an equation to describe the wavelength of these waves, or the wavelength of these particles, of these electrons. There was no evidence to support the wave nature of these particles until this experiment was done not with light, but with electrons. So we swap out light there, we put electrons. As soon as this experiment was performed with electrons, there was the evidence he needed to support his hypothesis that electrons, particles with mass, also have a wave nature. So let me just quickly summarize that, and then I'll answer your question, OK? De Broglie suggested that particles, like electrons, we're talking mostly about electrons because their mass is so low, but it happens with other particles as well. Electrons and other particles with mass have uh, wave nature. So now we have this wave-particle duality that's associated with the photons, with the light, that was established in 1905 with Einstein's photon theory. But it also happens with electrons and other particles with mass as well. There's a wave-particle duality associated with everything now. And we know this to be true by these electron diffraction experiments, these experiments that were performed uh, by sending electrons one at a time at this diffraction grating. If we got an interference pattern on the other side, then they must have diffracted. They must have interfered. And if they diffracted and interfered, they must be a wave. All right, that takes us to the last model of the atom that we'll do this year. In fact, the last thing that we want to do here today. We call it the Schrodinger, or sometimes we call it the quantum mechanical, or sometimes we call it the electron cloud model of the atom. There's a wave or a wave function associated with orbiting electrons. We needed to know that electrons behave like waves sometimes because this model of the atom depends upon that. The electrons aren't orbiting around in perfect circles with an exact position because the electrons, as they orbit around the nucleus, are orbiting around the nucleus not as particles but as waves. Now, there's a certain probability that we can find an electron in a certain spot that's all based on probability. We don't know for sure exactly where we're going to find it. Now, the probability can be calculated. There's certain areas where the probability is higher than others. Okay, in fact, the highest probability, 
the most probable location that you'll find an electron orbiting around the nucleus is at the Bohr radius, where Bohr said it would be. Rutherford said the electrons orbit around the nucleus wherever they want. Bohr said, no, they orbit around the nucleus right there, and right there, and right there. Now, the electron cloud model of the atom kind of goes the other way a little bit and says, no, they don't orbit around wherever they want to, but they don't orbit around right there. We don't know where they orbit because they're not particles. They're waves orbiting around. And we can, we can predict where we might find one if we have a look, but it doesn't have a particular location as it's orbiting around as a particle. The most probable place we'll find it, though, is where Bohr predicted that it was going to be, the Bohr radius. Kind of like this. Okay, Mrs. Stafford, she teaches a couple classes. She teaches a religion class. She teaches a math class now uh, for the last couple weeks since one of the teachers went on maternity leave here a little bit early. Okay, so she teaches a couple classes. But if we had to predict where we're going to find her, if we had to predict her location, what's the most probable location? Her office. Okay, we would likely find her in her office or near her office. There is a fairly high probability that we'll find her in the atrium. Okay, maybe she's just outside her office in the atrium. There's also a fairly high probability that we'll find her out with the secretaries okay, or the admin assistants. There's a lower probability that we'll find her in the science wing, although there is still a probability that we'll find her there, right? There's a lower probability that we'll find her upstairs in the social wing. After all, who would want to be there? But there's still a, there's still a certain probability that she'll be there. There is a probability, albeit a very small probability, that we'll find her in Calgary. Maybe she's there. It's a small chance that she's there, but there's a chance. She may even be in Mexico right now. There's a very, very small chance of that, but it's not a zero chance. The electrons as they orbit around the nucleus as waves may be found anywhere. They may be found 100 kilometers away from the nucleus. But the probability of finding them there is ridiculously small. The most probable location we'll find them is right here, where Bohr predicted they'd be. We just don't know until we observe it. Does that make a little bit of sense, based on what we had done a little bit earlier? So the electron cloud model of the atom, the quantum mechanical model of the atom, the Schrodinger model of the atom, basically says that, look, the electron isn't on this very discrete, specific level. It is. Okay, we still call it an energy level. It's still associated with a particular energy. But its exact location could be anywhere within this cloud. Because until we observe it, it's a wave. It doesn't have a particular location. Right? That's it for today.